So batching is particularly useful if, like in this Google Sheet, you've got thousands upon thousands of rows that you wish to loop through and scrape. We recommend splitting that operation up into batches. Batches from or between, say, 200 to 500. Why split it into batches? Well, because it's more reliable and actually it's faster. When building your bots and testing them, you don't want to be waiting for a, an operation of 2,000 scrapes to wait before you've got some results back because it'll take you a very long time to debug and finish your bot. What you want to do is start off with batches. First of all, start off with a small batch, one to five. Then when you've got your bot working, start with a larger batch, let's say 200 to 500. Then you can take advantage of our concurrency features and have multiple bots scraping at once in batches, getting the data you need quickly. So this is how you can batch in an Axiom. On screen, you can see I've got a read from Google Sheet step and I've already pulling in the data from this sheet, the links, you can see the preview there. Then I loop through those links and scrape some data, then output the data to the Google Sheet. That's kind of your average design pattern to a scraper with Axiom. Now, to make that more efficient and to batch it, I would do the following. I would first of all specify a last cell. So I'm going to specify a batch of 250. So now the loop will only be executed for 250 rows of this Google Sheet before it stops. And then the data would be written to the sheet. Next, I need to add for my batching a delete step. So I want to delete some data from the Google Sheet. So I need to select the same sheet, PB2, and I'm going to delete the rows from where the same tab links where I'm pulling the links in to the loop. Now, in step one, I set the last cell to 200 A250. So I'm going to want to delete rows 1 to 250. That effectively, effectively has created a batch of 250 in this axiom. So this axiom will loop through 250 rows, write the data, then delete the 250 rows. And then when you run it again, it will loop through the next 250 rows before scraping them, writing the data to the sheet and deleting those 100, 250 rows. So then all you need to do is keep running your bot till it's completed all the batches necessary. Now that's your basic form of batching set up. The rows will be removed and it's important to note you always want your delete step at the end of the axiom once it's completed your, your bot's actions. Because if you delete it, say like straight away after step one, if you put the delete step into step two, if the bot failed at all um, after that step, obviously the row would have been deleted already. But by putting it at the end, you guarantee that the bot has successfully looped through those pages without deleting the row, the rows. Okay, so the next form, or the slightly more advanced version of this batching, is that we can also add an extra tab to the sheet. We can just call that a tracker, for example. So we can just keep a track of the pages we've actually scraped. So to do that, all we would need to do is add an additional write step. And we'd output the, or connect the data instead of the interact data added there, we would connect it to the Google Sheet. And so the Google Sheet would, although we see a preview of 15, that's because we just show 15 in that preview. 
Google Sheet will write the 250 rows from this read step into the tracker sheet. Now I need to select my Google the sheet I want to use and then wait for it to load the sheet name. I just type it in. And so that's the additional write step added. And remember to toggle on add to existing data or all the data will be overwritten. That's really important to remember that. Now we've built up, a, a, basically we've built an axiom that has got um, a batching set up with a tracker as well. So what this bot will do, we'll read the 250 rows, then scrape them, write the data to a Google Sheet. It then writes the links it has scraped into the tracker before deleting those 250 rows. Now you can very easily vary the amount you want to do in your batch. So I could put it up to 550 by just changing 550 to, and making sure the delete amount tallies with the limit set in, in step one. And so that's the batch size increased. And then when I'm testing my bot or I need to make changes, if I want to do a test, I recommend you would use a very small batch size like five, for example. And that allows you to quickly run the bot, check five different sets of results, and then decide if you need to make some changes or if you're good to go to run larger bots. I hope you find this lesson interesting and useful and good luck making your batches. Thank you. Oh, and one final thing, if you've gotten to the end of this video, please hit subscribe. We appreciate it.